morning, Matt from Anytime Towing here in Vermont. Um, this morning um, I'm doing another late morning, early, early morning, late night video. Um, kind of when it's quiet around the shop, nobody's going to come barging in on me. Phone may ring, sorry if that happens. You may hear some scanner squawk, I'll turn that down a little bit. Um, so what I'm going over today is what I keep on my light duty wrecker. Um, there's some things that apply, we do have some heavy work we do, so I keep some heavier duty stuff on there, um, some heavier chains and stuff like that, but anyways, you'll see what I got. Uh, I have a tunnel box right here, so this allows me a little more cramming room. Um, there's never enough room on these trucks. Um, I've kind of limited some of the stuff because this is the light duty truck, we have flatbeds, we have all sorts of stuff, so I mean there's some things that you might want to put on your wrecker that is not on this one for sure. Um, one of the things is tow dollies. Um, we've had a couple sets, we've sold them with trucks, we have flatbeds, so generally I'm not, I'm not ever really missing them that much. Um, the plan is to get a set for this truck. Um, I just got this truck a couple months ago for the winter, so it will be in the works, but it's not in this list today. But um, what I'm going to do is a quick walk around of truck itself, um, you know, what I paid for it and how I got it, uh, and then some of the stuff that's in my truck, some ramping stuff, chains, straps, uh, roadside stuff, things like that. Um, let me just start, I'll grab this camera, we'll do a quick walk over to where I've got all my tools, and then we'll walk around the truck real quick. Um, switching over, so first thing obviously is jacks, I mean you can have a range of jack size you know, in a case of small jack stand, work gloves, clearly. Um, but anyways, that's kind of what you need for any kind of roadside tire changes and stuff like that. <clears throat> you can see I've built a couple different size ramps. This is just for different needs. Um, this truck has scoops on it and not like L bars. So sometimes I fight with flat tires and stuff. And this these really kind of help any kind of dealings with that. Or if I have to roll something up get it, you know, something wrecked, I can place this on there, get it ready for the flatbed, and the flatbed can deal with all that stuff after. Um, but anyways, that's that's the next step. Um, what we keep on there, we definitely keep a couple snatch blocks on here. Um, these are smaller snatch blocks for the smaller cable on this truck. See, we got two of those, and then we've got a chained one that's, you know, we, we put this truck in weird places, we've wrapped things, we use trees as dead man's or as, you know, snatch block off trees or multiple things. Um, this thing is kind of something I've kept around. This piece right here, sorry about the poor quality of video. Um, this is like one of those cargo strap things, but I use this just for rolling cars over. Um, generally, I'll run a chain from the front to the back of the car. Um, if I'm not using some kind of strap or something and then I will use that and like hook it in the appropriate spot Just so that I'm not lugging a bridle up and trying to fight with that, but that kind of If I got a car that's spinning one direction or another I can make a quick adjustment to the chain if it's going front to the back or You know or a couple chains. I can grab it in a different spot Those are my basket uh, straps for my scoops not a big fan of scoops. Came, that's what came on the truck. I'll probably be changing those out as soon as I can. Um, we have a couple different chains. I just kind of hung one of each here. Um, one of these is the just a quick um, cluster end. Sorry about the, the video here. You see, it's just got a T hook and a and a um, mini J kind of combination. And I use that to wrap things, whatever. That's a heavier chain I have on just because we do grab on a truck sometimes, box trucks, stuff like that that are stuck. Um, shovel, you know, we're digging out of snow banks, dirt, you get stuff that's buried, you got to find a hooking point. Um, a shovel is definitely a, a key thing, big pry bar. You know, if you're dealing with just light cars and stuff like that, then you may not need as big of a pry bar, and storage is always an issue. Um, sledgehammer. Or, you know, that, that's a maul, but generally I like to have one side that's pointed so I can deal with whatever I have to. Um, four ways, impact gun, your quick socket set, you know, a bottle jack along with our floor jack over there. Um, this is just stuff I have, again, because some of the stuff I deal with trucks, I gotta have a little bit more lifting. 
Um, I generally keep two sets of triangles, one for my truck and one for something disabled. It seems like a lot of guys aren't putting these things out, you know, in due time. Uh, some transmission fluid and other fluids. I keep a diesel tank again because we do some truck stuff, um, but a gas can, a uh, thing of washer fluid, and these are just kind of the basics um, that I keep on my truck. The only thing missing, I think, in this pile is a lockout kit just because we do do a lot of lockouts. Um, we got some pretty big snatch blocks that are scotch blocks, sorry, that I've kind of kept around. They came off another truck, a bigger truck, so these things come in pretty much handy when I'm dealing with something a little bit heavier, need a little bit more uh, grabbing for my truck. Um, cables, we generally replace cables as soon as we get the truck. These are a couple months old, um, so generally if every six months or if we get anything damaged, we try to replace those right away. Um, and then we have a um, spade, a wheel of spade. This is not your century model wheel of spade, um, but I use this when I have to. I'm not a huge fan of spades, but you know we deal with a lot of icy conditions and it's almost a must here, so that's what we do. Um, but that is the truck. We got six brand new studded snow tires. It's four wheel drive. We just put a plow on it. It's missing the front bumper. Nothing special. It's a 460 gas job. I bought this truck for $9,000. I probably paid a little too much for it, but it's in really good condition. Um, everything works. It drives nearly like a brand new truck. I was actually looking at brand new wreckers with this one because I was going to have an off road truck and then, you know, a newer like quad cab Dodge. And really, I got in this truck and I was like, I don't need a brand new truck. This truck is sweet. Um, it sucks the gas down, but I don't have a huge truck payment with this one. Um, we have brand new flatbeds. There's plenty of truck payment there. I don't need another one So we ended up buying this right from Eastern Wrecker sales. Um, it was a good it was a good deal really I mean it, I say I paid too much mainly because of the year But um overall this truck has already killed that you know It's made that money already and it does a lot of work with plowing and recovery work um, But anyways, that's that's what I keep in my wrecker quick rundown um if this, you find it helpful, go ahead and hit like. If you don't find it helpful, you know, hit the thumbs down. I'm, I'm all about taking a little criticism. And, uh, you know, write a comment on there. If you have any questions, you want to see something different, just let me know. Um, we range from light to heavy-duty stuff. I'll be doing kind of walk-arounds each truck. And then also continuing with our starting and tow company videos. Um, I'll be bringing that flatbed in here to kind of do a walk around of exactly how it came and then the processes of you know how we're going to fix it up to start using it and start that tow company in another area um but anyways jump pack um another thing i always do generally is my rule of thumb is i pack all the roadside stuff onto all, all my roadside repair or roadside assistance stuff goes onto the passenger side of the truck so basically, if we're having to go to the roadside and maybe the police aren't there or whatever, we're working off the passenger side, getting stuff out of the passenger side. The recovery stuff I generally put on the driver's side because if we're doing a recovery, either the road is blocked or we usually have a little bit of room to work and it's not such a risky situation. So that's generally what I do. Roadside stuff goes on the passenger side so you can work from the shoulder and then recovery stuff. So my straps, snatch blocks, stuff like that will go on the, the driver's side. Um, again, thanks for watching, thanks for following, and uh, we'll be back soon with another video.